Welcome to today's webinar, Improve Engine After Treatment System Performance with CFD, brought to you by Convergent Science. Thank you for joining us today for this new installment of our webinar series. My name is Matthias Sulis, and I am part of the business development team at Convergent Science. I will be your host for today's event. I'm really excited for all of you to learn more about Converge and its capabilities in after treatment system model. Convergent Science is a rapidly growing computational fluid dynamics software company. Our flagship product, Converge, is an industry leading CFD solver used around the globe to simulate fluid flow in complex systems. Converge features truly autonomous meshing, which eliminates all user meshing time and helps provide fast, accurate results for our client. Now it is time to introduce our speaker, Dr. Pengza Yang. He is the After Treatment Application Team Lead at Convergent Science. He joined the company in 2019 after receiving his PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Texas A&M University. Without any further delay, I will now pass the ball to Pengza. Thank you all. All right, uh, thank you, Mattia, for the introduction. So today uh, we're going to talk about the improved engine upstream system performance with CFD, especially with the Converge CFD. And uh, again, my name is Peng Zhe Yang. I'm the team lead for the upstream application team. So um, nowadays, the uh, emission regulations across the world is getting more and more stringent, which requires and it demands a new level of upstream performance. So the researchers uh, in the industry and engineers in the industry are trying to make the upstream system more efficient and have a lower cost and have a smaller packages and uh, they're looking for a shortened design timelines. And this usually uh, requires a closed coupled devices for the upstream system and which makes it more compact and then this new designs usually creates a new challenges such as the urea in the urea water solution sprays may have a less time to evaporate and decompose and the exhaust temperature uh oh, where the uh, spray will mix with will have a lower temperature which makes it more challenging and harder to decompose and have a lower uniformity index before it entering the catalyst. And to solve the issues, uh, usually the spray may rely more on splashing so that it will break up into a smaller pieces and uh, boost up the decomposition. And the other challenges, including uh, the researchers may have to combine multiple devices in the optimum system so that it can be more compact and uh, require a smaller packaging spaces. For example, researchers are looking for to wash code the SCR catalyst on DPF so that it can make it SCR on filter. Some other issues such as uh, the, the urea deposit. So urea deposit remains as a major issue when it comes to upstream system uh, improvement. And, uh, and to be more detailed, it requires uh, coupling the CFD solver with uh, a detailed urea deposit chemistry in the spray and the film to uh, model it. So we're gonna elaborate on these issues and how to solve them in the later slides. All right, so we already talked about the challenges that has been faced by the uh, research and engineer in the industry nowadays. And uh, luckily in Converge, we offer a series of uh, uh, physical models to uh, meet those uh, very high demands. So for example, we offer advanced spray models. And uh, besides that, we also offer a, a different urea decomposition model for both spray and the films to enable the uniformity studies. So for example, we have the multi-component and the molten solid for a urea decomposition. Besides that, we also have the detailed decomposition for, for urea deposit modeling. And additionally, we also have the liquid wall interaction models, such as the Konke and the Bygosman model. So we also take into consideration the rock 
heat transfer process and also the latent frosty effects. And then we can model the fuming, splashing, stripping, and the separating for the uh, fume parcels. Uh, as far as the urea deposit predictions, uh, we offer a bunch of uh, acceler acceleration schemes such as the fixed flow to uh, substantially accelerate the transient simulation with the power sprays. And uh, we can do a uh, conjugate heat transfer in Converge. And uh, another speed up uh, approaches we take is called super cycling, which can help uh, the case to quickly achieve uh, fully developed solid temperatures. And uh, we can do catalyst surface chemistry either using the Converge internal uh, surface chemistry solver, or we can couple with third party software like uh, GT Suite. And the last but not least, we can uh, model future uh, in Converge as well, especially for the DPM and the GPF simulations. And the first topic we're gonna talk about is to how to use Converge to, uh, to study the uniformity index for a urea SCR system. So as, as you may all know that it, uh, the UI studies are really important and significant for uh, upstream and system improvements. So the higher the UI it is before it entering the SCR, uh, the better performance the SCR we have and the, the more NOx reduction we're gonna have for the SCR. And uh, so we're gonna use the fixed flow feature. So fixed flow feature was initially developed for uh, deposit predictions. Uh, but recently, we further improved this feature by adding a species solver, which enables uh, users to uh, study the uniformity index as well. So with the fixed flow, with the species solver turn on, we can substantially accelerate and speed up the UI studies. So the table below shows uh, what's the speed up factor it is with the new solver. So with the fixed flow with species solver, we're able to uh, uh, turn around uh, six, I'm sorry, uh, turn around a case within uh, 6.37 hours using 48 cores compared to the baseline case where we're using a transient solver, it's gonna take 32.6 hours. So it's about five times more faster. All right, so in this slide, we're gonna talk about how uh, what kind of service commentary modeling capability we have in Converge. So in Converge, we can solve service commentary modeling uh, for both a diesel system and for a gasoline system. So for diesel system, uh, some uh, catalysts that we can solve in Converge, including the selective catalytic reduction, SCR, the ammonia slip catalyst, ASC, uh, the diesel particle feeder, DPF, the Linux trap, LNT, or the DOC, the diesel oxidation catalyst, just to name a few. And uh, uh, the uh, SCROF is still in development, so we're going to talk more about that in the later slides. And for the gasoline system, we can do a three-way catalyst, which is also under development. And uh, the already existing feature, including the DPF, uh, the GPF, the gasoline particle filters. So as we talk about, uh, we offer the in-house surface chemistry solver in Converge, including the region-based and the boundary-based surface chemistry solver. And besides that, uh, we can also in Converge, we also support coupling with thir with third-party software like GT Suite to uh, solve the surface chemistry. So in Converge, we're gonna handle the 3D uh, simulation in Converge. So we're gonna solve the full field upstream of the catalyst in a 3D manner, and we're gonna pass the data to uh, GT Suite. We're gonna handle the uh, subsequently modeling part. And in GT, um, we can take advantage of the uh, more advanced feature in GT and the uh, Converge gonna provide a non-uniform uh, inlet conditions and the GT provides the back pressure and the SCR outlet conditions. So also we, we can uh, model multiple catalyst devices uh, in GT Suite uh, and it can also couple with the Converge CFD. All right, so in the next few slides, we're gonna briefly talk about the uh, the DPF and GPL future modeling capability in Converge. So unlike other softwares uh, where they usually model the future in, in a 0D or 1D manner, 
and convert with Molly in 3D. So this feature is standard in Convert 3.1 and the newer versions. And in this feature, we're gonna calculate, we can calculate the overall pressure drop and the size dependent particular fuel, uh, particulate filtration efficiency uh, in Convert. And apart from the bare DPF and the GPF, so when I say bare, that means it is without any wash coating and it is without any cell loading. We can also analyze or study the catalytic wash code and the ash effects uh, in Converge as well. So in order to uh, model a DPF or GPF, there's no need to model the whole scale of the filter. So because of the symmetric pattern of the DPF and GPF filter, only a, a, sec uh, only a sector of the filter need to be modeled. So the sector is shown on the right-hand side so to zoom in, so we have a inlet channel and we have a outlet channel. And we have a wall substrate to separate the inlet and the outlet channel. And the wall substrate will be modeled as a pulse region so that, so that we can uh, predict the pressure drop. And also the, uh, the particular future modeling is going to be triggered within the wall substrate so that we can also model the size-dependent future efficiency. So in this slide, we're going to show the validation work that we have been done to validate this model. So the validation uh, is, is based on a experimental data that is published in this SAE paper. So we have the DPF property that is listed on the table on the left-hand side, and then we're going to use the operating conditions also listed in the paper on the left-hand side. So the animations in this few uh, videos that shows the dynamic wall substrate porosity and how it's changing uh, during the cell loading process and how the substrate uh, loading density is changing in the wall during the cell loading process. And in this video, uh, we're just uh, looking at it from a different angle. It also shows dynamic wall substrate porosity during the cell loading process. And uh, for the last video, it shows the uh, dynamic cell uh, cell cake thickness and how it's changing during the cell cake uh, during the cell loading process. So first we're trying to uh, match or compare the pressure drop, overall pressure drop uh, during the cell loading process compared to the uh, test data. As you can see, we're, we can roughly match the test data pretty well. And if you take uh, a, a closer looking at the, the pressure drop profile, it can be split into three different regimes. The first one is the deep back filtration regime, where all the uh, particulate, solid particulate will be trapped within the wall substrate. And then it's transition regime. And then it's the cell cake filtration regime, so, uh, where majority of the particle will be trapped on top of the wall. So the major difference between a deep bed filtration regime and the circuit filtration regime, as you can see from the pressure drop profile, is how fast, sorry, how fast the pressure will increase. So for the deep bed filtration regime, the, pre the pressure increase rate is much faster. And for the circuit filtration regime, the pressure increasing rate is much slower. And besides the pressure drop, we're also trying to compare the future efficiency with the test data. Again, we're gonna use the same case. The animation on the right-hand side shows the dynamic concentration within, within the wall and also dynamic wall substrate local future efficiency. So for the future efficiency, as you can see, for the first layer cell with, within this uh, port wall, uh, it is increasing pretty fast. The once it reached the level one, that means all the solid particle trying to cross the wall will be trapped within the wall and nothing will be escaping from the wall because we have a efficiency of 100%. And the same thing uh, for the concentration. So initially we have concentration across the whole domain, but as the future efficiency uh, kept increasing in the wall, uh, the concentration downstream uh, of the wall will keep will uh, keep decreasing because of uh, all the particles that's been trapped within the wall. All right. So for the next section, we're going to talk about uh, urea deposit analysis in Converge. 
So this is a very important topic and a very popular topic nowadays in the in industry. And the researchers in the industry are trying to uh, resolve this issue because if we have some urea deposit in your system, it's going to cause a lot of problems. For example, it's, it can increase the back pressure uh, for your engines and also blocking the injection nozzles, and uh, which can be really detrimental for your system. So from the higher level, we offer two uh, approaches to uh, do the analysis. So the first approach, which we also recommend for our users, is the detailed decomposition of urea. So for a detailed decomposition model, uh, we're going to model a 12-step decomposition kinetics in convert for both the gas and the liquid phase. And the formation of urea is a precursor. It's treated as a precur precursor to the formation of uh, other deposit byproducts such as silver and amylate. So we can all couple with uh, a new feature called a depo deposit certification model uh, for a better deposit pattern and a mass prediction. So nowadays, um, for the detailed decomposition model, we can just run it as fast as the other simple decomposition model. So there's no need to run a simple decomposition model unless it is a, a uniformly indexed study. So another approach we offer is a urea risk analysis. But the major difference from the detailed decomposition model is this is a highly empirical approach, which requires a tuning of parameters to, to match the experimental data. And uh, it is based on the simple decomposition of a urea, and uh, it requires a accurate film formation and the wall temperature predictions. So for more details about the detailed decomposition model, so uh, for the 12-step kinetics, so you can refer to the uh, picture on the right-hand side. So here in this webinar, we're not, we're not gonna go into any detail, but a few things to take into mind is uh, the deposit are uh, urea byproducts. And this, uh, they usually form within a very, really narrow but important temperature range. And this, once CVA and amylase are being produced, they, they require a pretty high temperature to decompose. So since they all form within a very narrow temperature range, so it is super critical to get a temperature right on your walls. So, um, Fortunately, in Convert, we offer a lot of uh, really robust and accurate physical model to predict the accurate temperature on your walls. For example, we have the splash models uh, for the Conke and the Bagosman model and the rock and the latent frosty effects. And we can use the uh, country heat transfer to, uh, to uh, predict the heat transfer between the, uh, the, the spray the film, the gas, and the solid walls. We also have the super cycling uh, uh, speed up approach to uh, get the equilibrium wall temperature uh, pretty fast. And we also offer the film evaporation and the heat transfer models as well. So uh, I think in the previous slides, we already talked about a multiple acceleration approaches to uh, speed up the simulation for deposit predictions. So deposits are byproducts of a urea decomposition. So fumes usually takes a long time to fully develop, and we have to wait for the film to fully develop so that we can have a accurate prediction of the deposit. And at, similarly to film, deposit can take even a longer time to develop, usually minutes to hours. Uh, I usually talk to uh, researchers from the experimental side is um, they usually run the experiment for a couple hours, even a couple of days, so that they can develop enough deposit to analyze the composi chemical composition of the deposit and the, the pattern of the deposit. So there's not, there's not realistic to a model uh, from the CFD point of view of minutes or hours of experiment. So we need to have uh, a realistic acceleration approaches so that we can speed up simulation to make it uh, really feasible to do the CFD simulations. So we already talked about we have the fixed flow approaches. So the, for, the, for the fixed flow approaches, it provides simulation acceleration. And uh, with the fixed flow approaches, the detailed decomposition model can run just as fast as the uh, modern solid model. And we also have the super cycling model uh, with the CHT, 
and uh, it can offer a faster solid temperature convergence. So the, fa the faster conversion for the temperature can lead to early fuming and the deposit formations. All right, so in this slide, we're gonna talk about a newly developed feature called the deposit certification model. So the deposit certification model can separate solid species from the fume parcels and store them in the cell, cell nodes as passives. So after separating the solid from the fume parcels, the remaining liquid parcels can continue being transported. The liquid parcel radius and the species mass fractions will be scaled to ensure mass conservation. So the sch schematic below shows how this process is done. So for the current time step T, uh, suppose we have two fume parcels on the wall and the, both fume parcels is, is in the cell, is in the cell in the center. And the one uh, three, uh, liquid parcels, one liquid fume parcels is made of uh, uh, all liquid species for example, a urea, I'm sorry, a water, and a liquid state, liquid phase of urea and a liquid phase of urea. As for the other uh, fume parcels, it's made of half solid and half liquid. And the solid are made of silica and amylase, and the liquid part is made of a uh, liquid phase of urea, liquid phase of urea, and uh, NCO minus and the NH4 plus. And for the next time step, um, this model will be triggered. Um, so whatever is solid is gonna be separated from the liquid parcels and the solid will be stored as a passive and uh, will be remain in the center cell. And uh, the rest of the liquid parcels will remain as a liquid phase and they, they can move freely. So as you can see, this liquid, uh, liquid parcel move from the center cell to the cell to the left and the, the rest of the liquid uh, parcels that got separated from the solid has been moved to the cell to the bottom and obviously uh, the mass uh, the species has to be uh, rescaled so that we can uh, res we can conserve mass so another new feature is called a geometry deformation so this feature it can be uh, coupled with the deposit certification model so that uh, the geometry deformation model can couple with uh, the certification model so that triangulations in the geometry can be translated based on dynamic deposit thickness. So this coupling allows the user to study geometry deformation effects on the local flow field and the subsequent deposit builder. So this is a, a really useful feature uh, because uh, in a lot of cases, if we have a deposit buildup on on the mixer blades or on the pipe in the mixer region for your SCR system, this kind of a deposit buildup can easily uh, block uh, part of the uh, a mixer and the part of the uh, pipe, so that it will increase the uh, the uh, the pressure drop uh, across the system. So in order to study the effects, we have to uh, physically move the triangles uh, on the boundaries so that we can uh, simulate this uh, deposit buildup process. And uh, uh, subsequently, as a result of that, we can also study its effects on the local flow field so that we can see how much of the pressure increase, pressure drop increase uh, it will cause because of the deposit buildup. So this is going to be a really in, a useful uh, feature in the future. All right, so in order to uh, validate the urea deposit uh, modeling features, so we're going to use a case uh, from this 2020 paper. So the citation is at the bottom. And what, it, what this paper uh, did is that they conduct a experiment on a pretty simple geometry where we have a flat plate and we have a urea water solution injection on the top. And in the experiment, we're trying to uh, measure, so the researchers are trying to measure the mean temperature on different regions on the test plate. And also they are trying to uh, measure uh, the liquid film patterns and the deposit patterns and the deposit mass. 
So we have the operating point listed in the table on the right hand side, and uh, also at the bottom, it listed all the physical models we use in this simulation. So first of all, we're trying to match the converged predicted uh, mean temperature for different regions and also trying to compare that to the test data. So as you can see, uh, for each region, four, five, and six, the mean temperature can roughly match the test data pretty well. And as for the liquid fume pattern and also the deposit pattern, at five, five minutes uh, on the the picture on the right hand side shows what it looks like in the experiment and uh, the picture on the left hand side shows the converged predicted liquid film thickness and uh, the deposit thickness all right so as, as you can see the liquid film pattern and also the deposit pattern can roughly match the test data again since this case is run with the more feature or the default the deposit the geometry deformation feature we also move the triangles on the test plate as well. So the Y uh, coordinate can show how much the triangle has been moved that as a reflection of the deposit buildup. So as you can see, uh, the Y coordinate can also match the deposit buildup pretty well because of the deformation feature. All right. So the final existing feature in Convert that we're gonna introduce is the muffler modeling feature. So we can do, uh, uh, we can model the muffler uh, in Convert as well. So we can try to predict the uh, trans, uh, transmission loss in a muffler geometry. So what we can do is we can introduce a pressure signal at the inlet and we can let the pressure signal to uh, to uh, go past the muffler geometry and go out of the outlet, and then we can monitor the pressure signal at the outlet. And we're gonna use this, this equation to calculate the TL, which is transmission loss. All right, so since we already cover all the existing features in Converge for the next section, we're gonna briefly introduce the ongoing development efforts within the upstream team. So the first ongoing uh, development projects, we're going to talk about the LTNE model, which stands for the local thermal non-equilibrium model. So this is a really important uh, feature and a useful feature where this can be used to uh, uh, model the engine co-start process and the catalyst light-up process. So this LTNE model can predict the uh, catalyst the thermal behavior during the cold start process. So using the LTNE model, the transient thermal response of the catalyst can be predicted at the different operating conditions. So the next ongoing projects that we're trying to do is to model the electrical heated catalyst. So the EHC, EHC can be used to reach the exhaust cast temperature during the cold start uh, process for the engines so that we can let off the catalyst earlier. So in order to do this, in order to model this in Converge, energy source modeling can be used in Converge uh, to, uh, to model how much, of, how much of the energy can be released from the EHC and how much temperature can be released for the exhaust after it passed a, an EHC catalyst. And uh, uh, what's more about the ongoing development effort is that we also trying to working on the hydrogen-based SCR. So in hydrogen engines, the NOx is the main environmental pollutant formed during the combustion process. And the hydrogen can be used as a reducing, reducing agent for NOx, just as the ammonia or urea can be used to, uh, for the SCR catalyst for a, a regular diesel engine. During the cold start or at, at low temperature, it becomes difficult to avoid deposit formation from urea injections, while hydrogen shows the superior activities at low temperatures. And the hydrogen-based ICR surface chemistry can be modeled in converged for NOx reduction. And uh, the last ongoing development, ongoing development efforts that uh, within the upstream team focus on the DPF thermal regeneration modeling. 
and also the SCR on future modeling. So the thermal uh, region for DPF is important uh, because we have to do the thermal region periodically to get rid of the soot. And for the SCR on future, because this is a current trend in the industry that we're trying to uh, wash code some SCR calyx on the future. So based on the existing DPF model, uh, a region-based SCR surface chemistry model can be added to the part substrate of the DPF. The potential complexity of this feature development lies in how the cell loading and the SCR surface reaction interact with each other. So whether the cell loading would impede the SCR surface reaction rate or the SCR surface reaction would affect the cell loading process required for the investigation. All right, that brings us to the end of this webinar. Just to briefly summarize, upstream modeling capability in Converge, we introduced a bunch of uh, capabilities in Converge for upstream modeling, including the pressure drop and the uniformity studies, the three wall interactions and the filming, uh, surface chemistry modeling, the DPF, GPF pressure drop prediction and the future efficiency modeling, and last but not least for the detailed decomposition for urea decomposition plus the the new deposit certification model and the new morph model for urea depo uh, deposit predictions and uh, a couple of ongoing uh, development projects including the catalyst the thermal profile prediction using the LTAE model the EHC modeling the hydrogen based SCR modeling the SCR on future and the DPF thermal regeneration modeling. Well, thank you so much.